Trash travels and um, going to areas such as the bays and the bayous and the rivers and being able to, to uh, clean up the boat ramps is something that uh, we're looking forward to doing and um, we're going to be um, doing this on October 16th mm -hmm. as you said and uh, it's just an area to it's an opportunity to focus on a different area that people may not have done in the past yeah and we're seeing of course video from last year's coastal cleanup where people were along the beaches mozart you and i have spent a time or two on boats on the beautiful pascagoula river and uh, of course the uh, pascagoula river basin is such a big part of uh, and i'm not sure people appreciate it of our culture down here and our way of life so i imagine you're excited Absolutely. about getting up into these some of these inland water ways and getting to work, huh? Definitely, definitely. Um, a part of the task force associated with the cleanup, uh, we actually produced a video that we're promoting and hoping folks can visit on the website. Uh, you're looking at some of it there. Um, but as, as she said, we're concentrating on the inland waterways, so there's things uh, that we want to try to get stressed to people about not walking in the marsh, uh, using grabbers when you're in the marsh, and, and really leaving uh, the natural material there. Don't remove that natural material because eventually that becomes a food source for birds and other wildlife. Okay, uh, my name is Jim Franks. I'm a research biologist with the University of Southern Mississippi's Gulf Coast Research Lab in Ocean Springs. I became involved in the coastal cleanup back in the uh, mid to late 80s. Mm -hmm. I know we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of that and I was involved in, in the, from the very beginning along with a group of other people. Uh, our, we had a committee. Our committee uh, was comprised of members from the um, uh, Gulf Coast Research Lab, the old Bureau of Marine Resources, which is now the Department of Marine Resources, uh, Sea Grant, Mississippi, Alabama Sea Grant, the Gulf Islands National Seashore, uh, Chevron, and a uh, few other organizations were involved with us as well. And we sort of were the nucleus of the, uh, I guess, the organization of the coastal cleanup in, in the, the late 80s. Um, it was a very exciting time because we realized we had mobilized a, ultimately a large group of citizens who were very concerned about their marine environment and we, uh, we would do this cleanup uh, in an effort to clean up all the debris and trash that may be accumulating along our shorelines and our bios and our waterways. It was a major effort and I think over the 25 year period it has been shown to to be a very uh, important community-based environmental program that we all are very proud of here in Mississippi. I initially became involved in the coastal cleanup as a, the president of the Friends of Deer Island, which was a group started in 1980. And uh, during that time, I was also a uh, instructor of environmental science at the University of Southern Mississippi. And my students, uh, as a part of their course, had to become familiar with marine debris, including cleaning up marine debris, and Irene was one of those students. Okay. And so uh, that was 
how we started. Um, and also during that entire process, um, the Coastal Barrier Resources Act was passed by Congress, which I helped to lobby for through the Sierra Club, and we got Deer Island protected as a unit of the Coastal Barrier Resources Act. And now this state of Mississippi, through the Department of Marine Resources, protects Deer Island as a coastal preserve, and it's our job as cleaners to make sure that island gets cleaned up and stays cleaned up. And he's already said sort of how I became involved mm -hmm. was as a student in his class with Deer Island. I've been a, an environmentalist most of my life, um, believing in our human connection to mm -hmm. the universe, so uh, it was just sort of a natural. Well, my employer initially got me involved in 1992, which was a very long time ago, and um, I do still participate. Um, I've continued to do it until I can't walk anymore, I suppose. But um, anyway, the um, what keeps me involved? Um, education. I enjoy educating the public and, and especially the children. And uh, what keeps me ins inspired is all the smiling faces and um, the people. The on the initial Tri County. Coastal cleanup. The Mississippi Marine Trash Task Force was formed. And the coordinators were the Bureau of Marine Resources, the Hickok County Chamber of Commerce's Beautification Committee, the Mississippi Alabama Sea Grant Consortium, Gulf Islands National Seashore, City of Biloxi, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Pascagoula Keep America Beautiful, Scranton Museum, Friends of the Islands, Hancock County, and the cities of Bay St. Louis, and Waveland. That's the hope, and you know, there's a lot of great things that can come out of the cleanup, um, especially what makes our cleanup unique is our involvement with the International Coastal Cleanup, which is put on by Ocean Conservancy. And what we do is this, the, the, all, all the participants fill out what we call a data card. And basically, they identify the different types of trash they're picking up and how much of the different types of trash. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then that information can be tallied up and we can see where the sources of debris are and what can we do, what action can we take to address that. And one of the things we've done uh, back in 2008, so much fishing line was collected that um, one of the members of our DMR fishery staff uh, took the initiative and started a monofilament fishing line recycling program. So now all along the coast, uh, as a result of cleanup results, uh, we have these um, bins where pe fishermen can take their line and put it into these recycle bins and we send them back and they can be turned into things like tackle boxes or um, reels and, and, and even artificial uh, reef environments. Mm -hmm. So um, there's real positive stuff that can come out of being involved with the cleanup. Yeah, I think we want people coming here to, to see that we care about where we live and it's important for all of us to participate and keep it clean. Mm -hmm. Children bring their parents as well and it gets the entire family involved in the coastal cleanup. That's exciting to see. I think over 25 years that's proven to be a real good program and it's been very, very effective. Uh, that first year also was very interesting because that's the year that uh, several of us worked with uh, some of our congressmen and senators in Jackson and actually that's the year that the Marine, uh, the Mississippi Marine Litter Act uh, was written and was signed by Governor Ray Blanton. So we were one of the first states to actually have a, a Marine Litter Act uh, governing actions on how to uh, best monitor and uh, basically uh, enforce uh, marine litter laws. And that, that uh, became the uh, responsibility of the Department of Marine Resources, and they've done a very good job of that over the years. So we were, sort of, we were one of the leading states at that time in addressing our marine litter issue. In 2007, over 3,484 volunteers for the Tri-County area collected 3,484 bags of litter along 159 miles of waterfront, more than 27 tons of marine debris, plus several dump trucks of debris too large for trash bags. In Hickok County, 
we've always received tremendous support from our Hancock County Board of Supervisors. They have always supplied us with anything and anything that we've always needed, and they continue to do so today. Yeah, it Co sounds like work at first when you hear coastal cleanup, but when the kids and the families come out and they get involved and they get excited about the items that they find and they realize that they're, it's, it's rewarding to help clean up the environment. Mm -hmm. First, probably the first year would be the most memorable because we realized very quickly that we weren't the only ones concerned about all the trash and the marine debris that, that we would most likely find when we went out and did our cleanup. It was, it was memorable because we had so many people who shared our interest and we had a successful cleanup, successful from the point of view that we had a number of people and we actually cleaned up several tons of debris. That was, that was uh, not a pleasant adventure to discover we had that much debris in our waterways, but it was positive, uh, positive from the point of view that we knew that uh, we could do something about it and hopefully in future years we could have an annual cleanup to both educate the public, get the public involved, and all of us work together to clean up our coast here. And I think over 25 years that's proven to be a real good program and it's been very, very effective. Uh, that first year also was very interesting because that's the year that uh, several of us worked with uh, some of our congressmen and senators in Jackson and actually that's the year that the Marine, uh, the Mississippi Marine Litter Act uh, was written and was signed by Governor Ray Blatton. So we were one of the first states to actually have a, a Marine Litter Act uh, governing actions on how to uh, best monitor and uh, basically uh, enforce uh, marine litter laws and that, that uh, became the uh, responsibility of the Department of Marine Resources and they've done a very good job of that over the years. So we were, sort of, we were one of the leading states at that time in addressing our marine litter issues. Well I remember when I worked on the beach there were two architects who were married to each other and they, they brought their little children out and they just decided that one block would be long enough for them to work in an area, but they just didn't realize at the time how long it was going to take them to do from points that avenue to the pier. And um, what really impressed me about that was they would bring these kids every year. And uh, I mean, they picked up bags and bags and bags of trash. And um, now their children are in college, so that that tells you that when you know, parents get involved with their children, it lasts for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's most gratifying to see the same people year after year um, because it takes a special person to be a volunteer and be willing to put in time and effort and sweat and, you know, get their, um, their uh, hands dirty and clean up after people who have very little regard for the area. They throw trash along the roadways and waterways. And it's a shame because they've put it in the garbage and have it picked up. Uh, they could um, throw it in a dumpster or they could even go to the recycle center with a lot of it. Um, that's hard to say. They're all memorable and um, I believe that my most memorable moment would be when my children told me they wanted to be data detectives. They were four and five, and they're 26 and 25 now. Well, I remember several years ago we made an effort to reach out to the boys and uh, Girl Scout groups, so it was really uh, wonderful to see our youth out there participating. And uh, some of our most memorable moments are watching the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts enjoyment as they find different items during the cleanup. And then afterwards they have a fishing rodeo on the pier and just watching their enthusiasm during that fishing rodeo. 
Well, one year in particular that does stand out with the cleanup is um, the year of 911. Because the cleanup at that time was happening in September, the third Saturday in September. And that was about a, a week after September 11th. And um, I, I, in my position as state coordinator for the cleanup and, and meeting with our Mississippi Marine Debris Task Force, which is the planning committee, there was just some concern, should we move, go on with this or not? And I wondered about that. You know, are people going to turn out, you know, because it was such a, you know, traumatic time for our country. And, um, you know, the thought was, you know, let's do it. It gives people something to do and to focus their energies on that's positive. And so um, my, my memory is getting up early that morning and driving along the beach, uh, along 90, and looking out and seeing all the people out on the beaches. I mean, it was just thousands of people. I think we had uh, about between two and 3,000 people that turned out to clean up the beaches. Mine would have been 2012. Mm -hmm. um, our first boat of um, those who were cleaning up the island um, had already departed and landed on the island, and the next group were on their way to the island. When I looked up, and streaming across the sky were pink balloons, and I thought how ironic, we're cleaning up the island, we're dealing with the marine debris, and here we have a group celebrating a very worthy cause, mm -hmm. multiplying the debris that we're going to find and the harmfulness of it to uh, the natural marine resources, uh, whether it's birds or fish. And it really just, it took my breath away. And I thought how much more we have to educate yeah. about um, our coastal resources and how privileged we are to live here and how precious those are mm -hmm. and that surely all of us working together can find more meaningful and more life-affirming ways to conf to celebrate and to know about um, those struggles that we go through as humans without harming yes. our natural environment. Okay. The streamers under the balloons entangle birds and other marine animals mm. and sea turtles will eat the balloons and it will mm. uh, choke their uh, alimentary canal so mm -hmm. it's not good to have them. Yeah. My most memorable moment mm -hmm. will be this year, mm -hmm. the 25th anniversary. When I retired, I returned to Clement Harbor full time and I spent more time picking up trash alongside the roadways passes by would sometimes yell things at me <laughs> and uh, uh, some things like you know wear your stripes and, and your green vest <laughs> you know they uh, they thought I was doing time and so I was quick to tell them no I wasn't doing time I just had time to do and I enjoyed doing it. One of the most interesting things that kind of led us on in the early years was an elderly lady in Ocean Springs her name was Miss Margaret Bryant she was 92 years old, and she had led the fight for a clean coast for many years, and so she became our figurehead there in the early years, and she would actually go out on the boats with us, go to the islands, collect at 92 years of age, and was sort of our standard bearer, kind of our, uh, she was our uh, main source of inspiration, and her name was, uh, we gave her the name of Auntie Litter, so we kind of liked that one, so Auntie Litter. Uh, Miss Margaret Bryant was with us for several years in the early days, and she was our sort of our inspiration. She would lecture us, you know, even at 92, and hop on a boat with us at 92, and then get off the boat and lead the way down the beach picking up trash at 92. So, pretty amazing lady. She lived in Ocean Springs, passed away a few years ago. What surprises you? Uh, the amount of debris and the amount of trash that there's there, it surprises me that how many people don't care about the environment and don't, will just throw beer bottles or c cigarette butts onto the beach. They throw trash along the roadways and waterways. And it's a shame because they can put it in the garbage and have it picked up. Uh, they could um, throw it in a dumpster or they could even go to the recycle center with a lot of it. So um, that surprises me why they don't change. And we found everything. We found um, um, hypodermic needles, which was, you know, strange and kind of scary, especially if it was on the beach area. 
uh, we found uh, things like uh, gar uh, grocery go grocery carts uh, in the in the area. We found oh, just just odd odd things, <laughs> and uh, we did a lot of recycling. We separated all of our uh, garbage and trash, and we recycled, and that was always a real treat for me because I really believe in recycling. Um, my zone is uh, now along North Railroad Avenue, which goes from Plumont Harbor to Lakeshore. Sometimes it's referred to as Third Marsh Road, and of uh, the things people throw there. Um, after it's cleaned, it is really a beautiful, pristine marsh area, but it's just hard to keep it up that way because it's still a dirt road, but it's positively beautiful when it's cleaned up, so I don't mind spearheading this cleanup along that section at all. I used to be on the beach. Um. <laughs> well, we found a porcelain toilet once. That was that was pretty interesting. I was gonna say cool, but not really. Um, tires usually, usually a couple of them per year, which is kind of sad. And then lumber, like huge pieces of lumber. You need like several guys to t lift it and take it out to the dumpster. So those are some of the, I guess, bigger ones or stranger ones we found. You found bricks last year, right? Several. Several. Lots. Several. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> well, um, gosh, after Katrina, we had many peculiar items, uh, but the most memorable item was uh, many years ago, a young Boy Scout found a hundred dollar bill in Keegan's bio, and he was so happy about that. <laughs> he got to keep it. <laughs> we found a stripped down boat one year, yeah. some big lot, truck tires. A lot of large truck tires, shotgun shells. Some small appliances. Yeah. A lot of Katrina debris, things from inside people's homes that washed out and washed back in. So mm -hmm. I think we've seen just about everything. Nothing surprises me anymore. I mean, we've found it all. Um, mostly they're beer cans and beer bottles, um, plastic drink bottles, old tires, baby diapers, believe it or not, uh, fishing gear, um, old crab nets, dead minnows and, and dead small crabs, which really gets to me because it wouldn't take much of an effort for the people who cast their nets into the water and come up with these things to throw them right back in and let them grow. And uh, then you can catch them and do something with them. Um, let's see, the, uh, last year I found two grave markers and a trial trawl. And so I thought, gee, this looks pretty good. And so I asked one of the guys if he wanted it. And he said, oh yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> So uh, that, that was interesting. We found, uh, I guess it was year before last, uh, a sampling device for blue crab larvae that floats in the water and collects the blue crab larvae, and they look at that. Um, in the past, there has been a submersible plastic device uh, that was weighted on one end and was a, a disc on the other with a long, uh, piece of plastic to it and they throw it overboard offshore and they use it to track where the ocean's bottom currents move. This was I believe thrown by Texas A&M University and where they wash ashore and are reported and we took the card from it and sent it in and reported. They know from where they put this device offshore and where it floated ashore they know how some of the currents have run. Um, other scientific devices that we've that we found along the way are the communication module that is under the weather balloons that they release in Slidell, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. They go up so far and then they burst and they float back down and they're encased in styrofoam. So we found several of those, but by the time we find them they're all corroded and you can't really uh, use them again. Mm -hmm. um, two years ago, and this is probably one of the most interesting ones, we found the cremains of a person's dog um, that were in a plastic bag that the person had the intent of burying them at sea 
But what they did is simply threw the bag over and the bag washed ashore and on that bag was a tag mm -hmm. that I still carry around as a memory of that little pet. Oh. That's always the most fun when, when you come back and you get the results from the cleanup uh, because the volunteers fill out the data cards and turn in this information and we tally it up. Uh, some of the things we found uh, or folks have found over the years, one was, I remember in Jackson County was a voodoo doll from New Orleans and that was found, uh, I think it was at Bayou Heron in uh, Jackson County um, and on the other end of the coast in Hancock County, I remember um, the report coming back that someone found um, a Princess uh, Diana um, commemorative coin actually and it, it may have been the year after Katrina that that was found and that was kind of interesting. Um, other things, uh, someone had had a purse stolen, a missing purse was found um, intact under the Ocean Springs uh, Biloxi the old fishing bridge. Mm -hmm. So there, there's been all kinds of things found. One of the most peculiar items that we collected during one of our cleanups in Hancock County was in the year of 2006's cleanup when a royal wedding coin, January the 29th, 1981, a lady, Diana Spencer's coin, was pulled from the mud by Kim Sawyer, a member of Diamond Head's Girl Scout Troop 441 along Beach Boulevard in Waveland near Coleman Avenue. The coin was later returned to the lady whose home on the beach was completely destroyed by Katrina. Well, uh, you know, and I look back and we saw a lot of odd things. I know a lot of other people uh, have reported to you uh, things they have seen, and uh, I'm not sure I could add a whole lot to the list of odd things that people have already told you they've seen. <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, refrigerators and uh, all kinds of plastics and all sorts of things that are washed in from offshore. Um, occasionally uh, deceased animals, mm -hmm. <laughs> tires, uh, things that had dates on them and gone back, plastic that had dates on them, things that had gone back uh, 20 years or so because they were non-biodegradable and so they were still there in the environment. Mm -hmm. um, well, with a couple of times we actually found some um, fish and I believe in one case a turtle that had become ensnared in a plastic six-pack ring. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, all, you, you name it, all sorts of, uh, of things we found, uh, birds, deceased birds that had eaten lots of plastic and had oh. felt their uh, stomachs were full of food and they stopped eating. Of course they couldn't digest the plastics and so they died. Mm -hmm. uh, it just a lot of attention grabbers. The most unusual things that we have found are the pottery sherds from the Native Americans who used to live on Deer Island and they wash out into the shoreline area and on occasion near the western end of the island we can go along and pick up pottery sherds and so it's the oldest marine debris that there is out there that we're aware of. Yeah. They, they, when the Indians put it in their in their kitchen middens, they didn't know that it would wash out eventually. But it washed out into the water, and we pick it up. It's, so that's that's the most <laughs> ancient thing we found. That's easy. Every single living, breathing person, <laughs> because uh, of course litter occurs where. Uh, people feel no pride or sense of ownership and where they feel someone else will pick up after them. Cleanups, that does happen, but it, and it's an instant gratification. But if we can clean up an area and if we can have people participate in that day and see how difficult it is and how costly it is for people to pick up litter, then maybe they'll take pride in their just their small area and uh, keep Harrison County beautiful. It affects everything, e the economic development, tourism, uh, our quality of life, and like I always told them, do you ever see any litter in Disney World? No. And do you litter in Disney World? No you don't. So let's not litter in Harrison County. Well I think there's really a great, uh, it's a great organization now, the cleanup, the annual cleanup. Uh, huge number of volunteers from all over the coast. Uh, I think 
the organization is, uh, is, is in great shape. And I think the important thing is that not only do we want young people coming along understanding the importance of a clean marine environment and getting them involved as much as you can, the very young people as they come up, of course, they're going to be the, the leaders, mm -hmm. but also their parents and then some of us who've been around a while, you know, we need to stay engaged as well. So all age groups, uh, the schools, uh, the uh, businesses, uh, government agencies, I think everyone's still pulling together and to, uh, you know, to, to let the world know that we care about our Gulf of Mexico. In Mississippi in particular, we care about our waterways. We're going to do everything we can to keep them clean. Increased participation and in cleaning up our environment one trash bag at a time. I think the Coastal Cleanup Program has a, a very good organizational chart. Uh, I think it's effective, but I would like to see more public service announcements on the television. Uh, particularly the newscasters when they announce certain events that are water related. I would like them to remind people that you know, it's very important not to trash the water, uh, that uh, you know, our ecosystem is very fragile. And we've seen that with the oil spill. We've seen struggling birds and dead birds and dead fish are still washing up on our waters and it, it hurts me. Um, I'd like to see more civic groups, schools, um, uh, anything that brings kids out, uh, different types of school groups, uh, rotary clubs, civic action groups. And our leaders because they set an example. Yeah, yeah definitely public yeah. officials and local leaders. Well, I think the goal for the coastal cleanup is to continue the good job that the coastal cleanup itself has been doing uh, from year to year. I think it's very successful and I think the goal would be continuing the good work that's, that has been done in the past. I do, I do. I, um, I would like to see it expand and uh, because Marine Dere does not have boundaries, I would like to see it expand farther north and um, involve some of the other waterways that need the coast. Uh, my goal is that <laughs> I wish we could eliminate it uh, by, by that is that people become aware that what they do has consequences. But maybe on a short term is to try to educate people, uh, as I mentioned before, that, that what they do has consequences down the road. Uh, the can that flies off the boat, uh, you may not pick it up. Uh, maybe Jason gets to pick it up for you uh, six months down the road. Uh, that kind of stuff. It's, uh, uh, we used to joke at school, you know, if you, pick, if you get it done today, you don't have to worry about it tomorrow. That kind of stuff. So it's just awareness of what they do. Awareness that, that it takes a lot of folks uh, to help us keep the, the coast clean. So. That's it. Yes, I would like to see us have at least 300 volunteers and even those with some kayaks or light boats that could get into the marsh and, and really pull out some of the trash. And uh, I mean, how do you improve on, improve on nature? Uh, what we have to do is improve on mankind because they're the ones that's messing things up. A particular goal would be to uh, make an impression on everyone, not just the people that participate, because you can have people that participate every year. But we really need that goal to go into the schools, we need to educate people on the ills of litter, and we need to fill uh, Harrison County citizens and really the coast, all, five, all three coastal counties and whole, the state of Mississippi for that matter, how important it is to have pride and ownership in the area where you live and to make it as beautiful and clean as possible. Well, I mean, of course the, the dream would be that there would not be a need to have the cleanup anymore, but that's probably a dream, but, but the goal is to, of course to just find less and less litter and, and inform more people 
get people more and more educated about the importance of uh, our marine environment and how something like a plastic bag can mean death for a sea turtle because you know if you can imagine that you're a sea turtle and uh, your favorite food is jellyfish and you're swimming along and you come across a plastic bag that looks a whole lot like a jellyfish and you swallow that well the plastic bag when it gets inside of you it makes you feel full so you stop eating and ultimately what happens is that sea turtle starves itself to death so if, if we can get those messages across about reusable plastic reusable bags and rather than disposing of the bags and what the impact it can have on our environment, then hopefully um, we'll see less and less of that. And y'all are going to continue to do the coastal cleanup? Yes! yes. yes. Okay, I'm Pretty much. Yeah. I think it would be a big help if everyone who did the coastal cleanup said, I brought one person with them. Pick up a friend, pick up somebody you know, bring one extra. If everybody did that, that would be a lot more people on the beach cleaning it up. Excellent. Now my sister's grandson is working with me uh, cleaning up. So he, this is going to be his first cleanup. But he, he goes around picking up trash with me on our own. But uh, he's going to be officially involved, so I'm really excited about that happening. Uh, we will always be involved with co coastal cleanup. We partner with the county and our public works department. Uh, we give out bags and gloves and distribution points at Fort Morapaw Park on Front Beach and then at East Beach as well over close to the Gulf Coast Research Lab. We have a lot of participation, people signing up. We partner with the Ocean Springs Rotary Club and we just have different civic groups and like I said youth groups take some ownership in it. Education is the key and then first-hand experience by getting out and actually participating in the cleanup. That's that's what's important mm -hmm. and that will help to to work toward ensuring that we do have a cleaner marine environment. Uh, not only cleaner because it looks better and it's good for tourism, good for business, it's, it's very important for our marine life. So that should be our goal, is to continue the good job that has been going on for 25 years. I thank you, and God bless each and every one of you. One of the things I tell a lot of people, we need to protect our environment. We've done much harm. Man has done much harm to our environment. And we have to look forward to having a better place for our future generations to come.